Hey, FCS Fans Nation, it's your unbiased buys and admin, Matthew Frazee. Thank you so much for checking out our Frisco preview episode with our special guests, Brian Thompson, the Taco King, Sam Herter, and of course, the Rev filling in for Jamie Williams for us on this episode. Just wanted to take a quick second before the episode kicks off to let you know, we are doing our traditional FCS Fans Nation podcast live game day show Saturday morning live in Frisco, and that will stream on YouTube. So if you're an Apple or Spotify listener, make sure you go to FCS Fans Nation on YouTube and click that subscribe button to catch the show. It's always a good time with the whole network of podcasters together previewing the big matchup between the Jackrabbits and Montana. Make sure you follow FCS Fans Nation on Twitter and Facebook because we're going to be posting Thursday through Monday where we're at, what bars we're going to, restaurants, what activities we're doing. The best part of Frisco is meeting so many of you who listen to this podcast, support the page, and interacting with FCS fans. So if you want to meet with us, have a few beers, have a good time, make sure you're subscribed and locked in to all of our platforms. Appreciate you guys listening. Can't wait to show this episode to you and excited for Frisco. Boom. I do think if they spread South Dakota State out, they do a lot of design quarterback run with, Flick, with Clifton McDowell. That's probably your best bet to move the ball against the, the, the best defense in the FCS. to the official podcast of FCS Fans Nation with your hosts, Kyler Neal, Matthew Frazee, and Jamie Williams. FCS Fans Nation. It is time. Who's ready to tiptoe Heidi Ho on down to Frisco? I know the people on the screen are ready to go because they'll be my roommates this coming weekend. Kyler Neal, one of many special guests on the episode for our Frisco preview. The Rev, Dustin Helton, holding down the fort because our first question on the podcast tonight comes from Jamie Williams was actually posted on the question post he says do you miss me um no oh sorry were you gonna ask who you want to talk first i was literally gonna say i'm gonna say yes jamie because before i hand the floor to kyler he he, we know how this is gonna go so i'm gonna give you my heart a little bit be like i do miss you buddy i i i don't feel super bad because i know you're in paradise in florida right now but uh kyler do you miss miss our buddy you miss this no No, that guy, you know what? Uh, he doesn't miss us. That's the thing. And because, like you just said, he's in paradise. He's on a crystal clean beach. Sorry, Rev. It's not a Galveston caliber beach. Oh, that's that's Galveston East. <laughs> that's Galveston East. It's a much nicer beach. So, do I miss someone who doesn't miss me, who's not thinking about me? The answer is no, Matt. I'm petty. I'm petty about my team. I'm petty about the FCS. I'm petty about my co host. So, no, screw Jamie. Screw Florida. Uh, but when he, when I see him in first, I'm gonna give him a big hug and probably a kiss right on the lips. Oh, I love it in person. Not as mean as he is over the airwaves. Um, uh, so social media 101, I don't you know, breaking it mm-hmm. down for you. Uh, oh, Rev cool. pumped to have you, man. I'm pumped to see you this coming weekend. We're recording on Saturday before Frisco. Cause we want to give the folks enough travel time down from Montana and South Dakota to get to Frisco and hear some great FCS content. Uh, thanks for joining us. You pumped for next weekend there, Rev? You ready to rev it up? Oh, yeah. It's going to be a blast. It always is. It's great to see you guys. Uh, great to see our, our buddies who are part of JI up there in South Dakota. Great to meet some new Montana fans who we you know, haven't met. Um, it's just always, it's always a good weekend. And it, even if your team's not playing like mine annually, isn't playing, it's still a good time to go and go check it out. And to prep, I do have some beer out of Fort Worth, Texas that I'm enjoying tonight. Ooh. So. So, uh, you know, just to get in the uh, in the uh, spirit of things. But no, it'll be definitely a good time. It always is. If you're still vacillating on if you're going to go or not, and Brian, vacillating means wavering. Um, you can, uh, I know it's a big word. So, um, you, I mean, honestly, you should just go, even if you don't go to the game, go for the experience, go be there for the weekend, go to the, even go to the tailgates, right? And you can probably get tickets day of for pretty cheap. So I would strongly advise you to go. Absolutely, especially with the amount of scalpers we've been booting off of the uh, the Fans Nation page. You get 
20 of them a day, those scalpers will get nervous at the end and other people will still be selling their tickets. So it's going to be a good time. We're going to talk more about what we're going to be doing at the end of the episode. Uh, but we have other special guests besides our rev here on the hook tonight. So we're going to stick on our timeline and folks are ready to talk about this national title game. We hope everybody had a great holiday season. We hope your new year's is safe and healthy and it's a fun time. And now let's talk a little football. Let's get into the big seven of this national championship matchup. The top seven FCS topics of the week. This is the big seven. As always, before we get things kicked, we want to thank our sponsors, Walk on Apparel and the Versus Sports Simulator. Versus Sports Simulator, of course, with our prediction segment at the end of the episode. Walk on Apparel, still dropping new stuff daily, monthly for the FCS. 15% off your order there. Money actually kicks back to the school. Catch our promo ad here at the end of the episode. That being said, gentlemen, let's roll right into the Big 7. Ben Fujin gets us started. These are going to be a build slowly to specific to broad questions as we have the South Dakota State defending national champions of the FCS, undefeated 14-0, number one seed, taking on the number two seed, the Montana Grizz, the Dallas Cowboys, Nebraska Corn Huskers of the FCS, back on top, ready to maybe reclaim some Grizz glory. So Ben kicks it off here, guys, for us tonight and says, will it be more tough, more difficult, tougher for the Jacks to run it or throw it against this Montana defense? Kyler, I have to give you the floor first. You've spoken this season about the swarming ability of Montana. You have not been shy that you're very impressed with how they play. What do you think? What will be more difficult for the Jacks to do? Man, uh, yeah, actually, this is a difficult question. Maybe I should have prepped. Maybe I should read these questions, Matt. Holy crap. Um, well, I'm going to help you out here a little bit. Sam, I was going to say, goat. yeah, I just dropped I saw, his. Yeah, I saw tweet. Sam's tweet, you know, yesterday or two days ago um, where it was really talking about, you know, the corners. Um, but some of that is, is literally because of the pressure Montana's putting on, you know, the line. Now, even NDSU's line, who is, is typically the pinnacle, they're not the same as South Dakota State's line uh, the last few years. So that's making it. I don't know. There's more weapons, I think, for SDSU in the wide receiver tight end position. But I think if I'm SDSU, I'm going to rely heavily on the run. I, I, I do think you can wear down Montana's defense with that sheer size. I mean, those are those aren't grown men. Those are grown aliens. On those are SDSU's behemoths. Line. Yeah. yeah, it's it doesn't really make sense. It's like that old Wisconsin line from like 10 years ago where every guy was 330 and it was bigger than every NFL line they're not quite that big but it's still ridiculous especially for this play uh the, you know the fcs so i i think it's actually maybe after the first quarter uh it will be a little bit more open in the air but i think montana will just shut down and really get to the quarterback and i really think the way for south dakota state to win is just continue to run it down montana's throat if you get a couple three and outs cool just keep wearing down that d line Make those linebackers not as effective. Slow down those linebackers. Throw down that D-line or slow down that D-line. And then I think you're going to see some pretty big openings in the fourth quarter that may just make this game a little bit out of hand. So, yeah, if, if I'm SCSU, it's probably going to be a tale of two halves. The first half maybe a little easier to throw. And then when there's some adjustments, then I think the running game is just going to open up in the second half. Interesting. Rev, um, Kyler has talked about Mark Gronowski, maybe the only person who's ever given uh, – Mark Kronowski, a little bit of grief in terms of his abilities, capabilities, things like that. Yeah, he's Do not going to be the winner of this this week's game. <laughs> oh, big call here. Uh, Sam Herter is up on the screen with his tweet, and it says the last four quarterbacks that played against Montana, um, Tommy Mallott, Ryan O'Connor, Tyler Huff, Cam Miller, they did not have good games. They did not perform well. If Montana is able to make it tough on the Jacks to run the ball, do you think this is something where Gronowski is going to step up and, and keep the ball rolling, or do you think he kind of needs that? I'm a huge fan of him. I think he can handle it, but what do you think? I think he, he can handle it, and here's why. Comparative, maybe <clears throat> on the scene, the closest to it is North Dakota State, but do you remember Home Alone 2? And yeah, I watched it scene? two days ago. Okay, so you remember the scene when the giant tool chest on wheels goes down the stairs, yeah. right? South Dakota <laughs> State has <laughs> five <laughs> of those <laughs> on their offensive line. Okay. <laughs> Their guys are massive and they're powerful, <laughs> and I think they can hang in and they can give Gronowski the protection. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't think 
South Dakota State's going to have to depend on Gronowski as much. But also, too, Gronowski has a couple things he's uh, the other teams didn't have in that, in that. He's got three NFL prospects to throw to right off the bat yeah. with the Yankee Twins um, and their, their tight end, whose name I just blanked on for some reason. And then, of course, that's because there's a that's because there's a million of them. <laughs> yeah. And then and then he's got a uh, Wildy, the freshman who is who has come on as well. But then he's still got Isaiah Davis out backfield like he's got more weapons, I think on his offense to, to utilize than these other teams had. And it's not a slide against any of them. Um, That's my whole take the whole time. It's, yeah. it's Gronowski's not beating you by himself. He's yeah. beating you with the most talented offense in the nation. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's exactly it. You could think you could it won't be as good as Gronowski, but he'll make a couple throws. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can think about NFL teams who have won Super Bowls with talented receivers and running backs and mediocre, not to say mediocre quarterback because Gronowski's not mediocre, but you mean like a good quarterback. He's, um, good. he's good. He's he's good. He's, he's a really good, good quarterback. He's really good. Yeah. Um, I actually, I like Gronowski. I like the way he plays. I think he's gotten better, gotten smarter as the season's gone on and how he throws. Um, and I just, I think they have the offensive weapons to, to, to control the ball. I think that with Montana, I mean, Montana's going to have to bring a lot of pressure, I think, to even remotely uh, stall the SDSU offense because I think the SDSU offense will be able to do the ball as they want against Montana uh, against Montana's defense, and it starts with their line. It starts with their the five craftsmen tool chests that they have uh, protecting the quarterback. That was a great, great, great visual because I yeah. watched that, and it's coming down the stairs so <laughs> slow. Don't, don't. He's putting his ear on the what on the door, hearing it. What is this? What is this? And then all of a sudden, he flies back. That's a great <laughs> visual. I just, I really don't think that the Montana defense um, should be underplayed, though. It, I know no. it is a it is a compliment that you guys are giving to South Dakota State. I definitely understand that concept, but like, remember that the Montana defense, and we're going to get into this a little bit in the next question or two, kept them undefeated and alive when their offense was trash. And yeah. like, it's it's that good. It's that capable. My thing Fantastic. with Mark Gronowski, I, I know we won't have another question really to do this, so I'll go off on my little soapbox here, is like my hot take is that he probably, if without an ACL injury, has about his, if he wins this one, probably has four national titles. Oh, and right. that goes back to the Montana State 2021 year. Um, mm -hmm. Like there is that it factor, and it does take a special person. I saw it with Easton Stick to manage and, and perform under that roster, and it does take a certain level of talent, and Easton Stick's still in the NFL. So he he's a great quarterback, and we'll see what happens um, in the future. I, I I have so much more to say, but it, it connects more to the third question. So I'll we'll take a pause <laughs> well, the thing, the, on that. I'll, I'll say the thing too is I don't think Kyler and I were necessarily undervaluing the Montana defense because the Montana defense did keep them in games where their offense sputtered, especially in September, with the exception of their loss to uh, Northern Arizona. Right? Um, the defense is why they beat Paris State. Let's just, you know, in, in a game that they probably would have lost had their defense not been top notch. But I think there's two levels here. And I think while Montana is really good, South Dakota State has been on another level for the past two years. I think that's what the gap is. So it's not underplaying or undervaluing. It's just recognizing that one's just above the other. I think I think there's definitely going to be portions of this game where South Dakota State's offense looks very pedestrian. And that's because Montana's defense is very good. Um, I just think the more you lean on the size and the athletic ability of the South Dakota State's offense, probably in the fourth quarter is where you're probably going to see the big push. Um, yeah. And I, I have no clue what the questions are, so I don't want to give away too much on what I think is going to happen. But, no, I actually think Montana's, Montana's defense is going to make Mark Gronowski have to rely – just like he does most of the year, but actually have to rely on Isaiah Davis and his weapons more, maybe doing screens because he's not hes not going to have a whole lot of time to throw this ball, at least the first half when Montana's fresh and excited. Yeah. Um, and I think you're going to see Mark Gronowski maybe sometimes in the first half try a little bit too hard where he's going to think he has to rely on himself and he's going to make some uncharacteristic mistakes. And also, it is, what, 7.45 at night, 8 p.m., and you're drinking a Red Bull? You are wild. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Is Alex that what I just saw? Or is that... waiting on him. <laughs> whether whether it's uh, whether it's Red what Bull, what are you doing tonight? Or Mountain Dew, or Coca Cola? I could drink three of these, <laughs> and it will not upset how tired I am. Yeah, but from having what? children, having three boys at the ages of two, five, and seven. Matt, are I you trying still... to stay awake? 
I will still fall asleep. Well, that's Man. fine. You can still fall asleep, but are you trying to actively stay awake? Um, I, I think I'm just on survival mode. I think, yeah. Okay, I think I'm just enough. on parental survival so like, dude, mode. Just, just dude, just have a water and relax. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Like, I mean, take it down. Like, the, the water water's ready for Frisco. He's uh, like, everyone's been making fun of my drinking ability, my, my, <laughs> my ability to stay awake. <laughs> I'm chugging Red Bulls for seven straight days. <laughs> Kyler, he secretly put Jaeger into the can before he drank <laughs> it. Or... <laughs> Let me say this. I'm a lovely margarita. I uh, love. Hey, yep. Hey. I love to have two of them. Let me just, I'll say this as we go on to the next question. Uh, you you know me. I am not ashamed of any any way that I am. I know. I, you're like, oh, they're worried about Matt's a weak drinker. Matt does this. I'm like, he just, he is who he is. So I just love it. I just saw that Red Bull and got very impressed. <laughs> I, uh, we, I can't wait to hang with you guys in person. Um, <laughs> speaking of hanging in the air, which is what punts and kicks will do at times, um, Jim Poppin cannot wait to take a new Frisco photo with you, Jim. Excited to see you down there. Um, thank you for the shout out on Twitter today. You gave me as well. He said, would you have enough faith in kick your kick coverage to kick the ball anywhere close to Junior Bergen? So here is the thing. I have heard this, and I, and this is an expansive question. Um, not just about kicking to Junior Bergen. All I've heard is that if Montana's going to win, they've got to break something open on special teams. They've got to break something open on special teams. I feel like it's somewhat of a lazy take. I understand it, but like, is that really, is that the only thing? Is that the only way? So Rev, first off, um, would do you think they will kick to Junior Bergen? Should they? combined with is this the only edge that montana has like what are we looking at here junior bergen is the second best kick returner playing this game because tucker large is statistically better but we can d- divert from uh that junior bergen i would trust my kicking team to kick to him but i would also trust that junior bergen is so damn special that he will find a way to make a move and score that is probably one of the fastest people i've ever seen with my eyes like he is insanely good and he has been that he was a difference um, in the game against Furman. He was a difference in the game against North Dakota State. Like he is so impactful that I don't think that a special teams thing is a lazy take. I think it's an accurate take because you're kicking to him. It's a different dimension. You're opening up a different part of the game. And he has the ability to literally flip a field. He has the ability to score. He is super fast. He's quick. He, you think he's going to be, you know, going one way. He, he shifts and goes another. Like he is so insanely good that, that, yeah, like I, I would trust my kick team to kick to him because I would trust that they are good enough to cover him. But I also would trust that he is good enough to make stuff happen. I don't buy that people are just like, and it's Twitter reaction instantly. Like NDSU kicked to him and he returned it all the way for a touchdown. And people said, idiots, why would you even kick to him? Dude, coaches and uh, coaches are cocky and confident as well. And they have confidence in their players too. Yeah. They're going to punt and kick to this guy. It's People are like, I bet it doesn't even happen. There's no freaking way. There, those South Dakota special teams coaches aren't telling the players he's too good. We're not going to do it. They kicked to Dante Hall. They kicked to Devin Hester, and the other team had the belief that they could shoot fireworks off and stop them. But here's one <laughs> thing that makes me. Here's one reason I do believe they might be a little more tactical. Honestly, Jimmy Rogers was part of the team that lost to Sam Houston in that spring season. Can I remind you of a name? And I'm probably saying it wrong, but it, you'll you'll wrap your head around it. Jaquez Azard, that yeah. remind you? Jaquez, oh yeah, the, that two Jaquez. touchdowns, ten mm-hmm. catches, one hundred eight yards. The game winner, probably the difference maker offensively for why Sam Houston got it done. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy Rogers or others might still have something like that in the back of their mind to be like, boy, that he was like a singular playmaker on that offense, and he was probably the reason that they had a good offensive day that day and won that game so close at the end. We probably should avoid a guy like Junior Bergen. I still think they'll kick to him, but I think they may be a little more tactical when they've got that in the back of their heads, how a guy can change an entire game. Well, you bring up the point on Jimmy Rogers, and of course he was there in 2021 for that game. But remember, too, he was part of the 09 team that gets referenced now with this game between South Dakota State and Montana, where South Dakota State in the second half just folded like my table in college. Right? Like he He has a lot of memories and a lot of reasons to come out with every sort of trick for this game. And he's going up against 
a special teams genius than Bobby Hawk. Right? So do I think do I think he'll kick to him? I don't know. I I don't know because the defense is good enough to take the penalty, right? But I think that you'll see a little bit of I don't want to say cockiness, but confidence kick in and he will kick it to, to Junior Bergen. It'll be there, fun to see, Kyler. There, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, there's gonna be times where it's only Junior Bergen back there. They're gonna yeah. kick to him. So, like, <laughs> what, what are you gonna do? Just kick it out of bounds and lose 30 yards? No, you're going to kick it to him and rely on your special teams to make the play. And SDSU is going to be very cocky and confident that they have the best special teams, the best offense, the best defense. They're going to try and stop Junior Bergen. So then if they win at the end of the game, they can say, see, we beat Junior Bergen, the only electric player on Montana's team. Now, um, maybe we'll have some differences on that. But um, yeah, you're you're gonna kick him. He's gonna return punts. He's gonna return some kicks. I mean, how many people didn't want to kick it to Devin Hester? Yeah, he always kicked it to Devin Hester. Like you're the return man. Yep. You're gonna get the ball. You're gonna get the opportunity to make plays. Now, if there's an option and there's two, you know, for a kick return, there's two people. Yeah, you're probably gonna lean away towards Junior Bergen. But these kickers also aren't the most elite of the elite to wear. No matter what. You got five yards, you're going to kick it to one section. No, you're just trying to boot it as far as you can, somewhere in the middle, so then your um, you know, special teams can line up and get to the ball as fast as possible. So you're just going to kick it down the field, and guess what? There's probably going to be a couple plays, even if they line up two in the back. One's going to pull away, and who's going to catch the dang ball? Junior Berg. And he's going to do his absolute best to try and get down the field. Like, the, he returned two returns from Furman. Do you not think – NDSU said, I, I don't think we should kick it to him at all. No, they still kicked it. And yep. guess what? It backfired. But you're a return man. You're going to get opportunities to catch this dang ball. So, um, yeah. Exactly what you said, Kyler, is uh, kickers and punters aren't flawless either. That Everyone in the crowd is going to react when a punt goes off to Junior Bergen. And if it's got huge hang time, you're going to go, oh, smart, smart. Okay. like the, you, you feel that collective, like the whole crowd's like, yeah, okay, smart, smart, smart. Yeah. And then you're going to see it. He might actually get it off his foot wrong, and it'll be going like an arrow. And everyone's going to go, oh, crap. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> Why yeah. would you do it? So it'll be fun to see, uh, Jim, to see South Dakota State special teams go up against such an electric player. Um, you want to feel electric electricity there, Rev. Uh, Kevin Madal says, this is more like getting this is Kevin's getting, my favorite montana kevin's a great fan. kevin's a great guy just kevin's just saying it I'm, I'm putting it out there and yeah. i know a lot of montana fans kevin's my favorite yeah kevin's I, a good guy i think we'll be uh jeremiah rash pra, uh happy for kevin madall if the grizz win jeremiah rash southern illinois fan great human we're always happy when they win for him this will be for you kevin he says this is a great question is the grizz style of making the game ugly actually an advantage against sdsu so like mm. getting rid of electricity and turning it into just a gross ugly game kyler what do you think man is this the thing you, they just got to make it gross where sdsu is out of rhythm what, what what has to happen here yeah actually probably that's their best bet now one thing even before i break down to this question i want to give kevin some credit so it was right after the nau loss kevin goes this Montana team just seems a lot like that 2010 Eastern team. You play really close versus a good D2 team. You win a lot of close games. You get blown out by a okay big sky team. It was Montana State for us. But then you win every other thing. You take NDSU to multiple overtimes, right? So everything he is saying is very similar to this very way of winning that Eastern Washington 2010 did. You relied heavily on the defense. You still have playmakers on the offense that can change a game. But you made it ugly. And um, people probably don't remember that year a lot, but Eastern made it ugly. I mean, every single game, it was ugly. Now, we had Taiwan Jones. They had Junior Bergen. Completely two different players. Extremely fast, extremely dynamic. That was kind of about it on the offensive side of the ball, and then they just made it ugly. So um, I do think if you can make this game ugly, get into Gronowski's head. Make them play a little bit, you know, sloppy. Like Illinois State, that was one of those games. Villanova, that was one of those games where maybe if those teams just had a little bit more of a dynamic player on the offensive side of the ball, not Nick Baker, not that impressed, 
but maybe more of a dynamic player on the offensive side of the ball. You get in someone's head, you make them have some overthrows that could have been easy touchdowns. You make them try and run it because the passing game's not really working that well. Make it ugly. That is probably your best chance of winning because when you look at this South Dakota State team, they are more talented, in my opinion. Just like I said against that like North Dakota game when they were playing, they're more talented on every single side of the ball. I mean, everywhere. Sure, Montana maybe has two players that I think are probably a little more dynamic than most of the SDSU roster. But outside of that, every single positions group is probably going to favor this South Dakota State team. So if you can get in their head, play some mental games. Montana is pretty good at making it gritty, making it ugly, and um, kind of being a little more physical than most teams would you know, like to admit. And you have some dirty plays. Big Sky is known for that. I'm sorry. It is what it is. Even my Eastern Eagles, we get dirty sometimes. Portland State gets dirty every time. Montana gets dirty. Um, yeah, try and get people off the rhythm. Make it ugly. And then, you know, you force this defensive battle. That's the only way that I think Montana really has a good shot. So, yeah, if Grizz can kind of make it ugly, I, I think that's their best advantage to beat an SDSU. If you're trying to get in a shootout with them, probably not going to work. Right, if you're trying to play perfect with SDSU, probably not going to work because you have to play a perfect game, and they don't have to play a perfect game. That that's kind of my take on these two teams when they're going against each other. SDSU doesn't have to play a perfect game to to win. Montana probably does on the offensive side of the ball, but if you make it ugly, make some mistakes, have force a lot of turnovers, make it this just entertaining battle, almost like a mud game, but it probably won't be a mud game. But maybe turn it into like a mud bowl where you just have no clue where the ball's going. Uh, yeah, that's probably Montana's best chance of surviving. Kyler, I like what you said there because Montana really getting this game ugly is going to be their chance. The reality of me predicting Frisco games, I've been off horrifically one time. And that was 2015. I thought James Madison, not James Madison, Jacksonville State and NDSU. I actually thought it was going to be a good game. I was just like, jeepers, this Jacksonville State team is just on fire. And it did not go that way. I am not buying into this. Uh, this isn't a prediction who wins. I'm just not buying that SDSU is going to roll. I just don't get that feeling that it's going to happen. So this speaks to the question about the game getting ugly. Is last year it was just almost destiny. And nothing against SDSU, but NDSU, the injuries, the portal. They SDSU was so much better than NDSU at that point. It was it was game over. It was destined to be this blowout annihilation. And there was a mental motivation behind the rabbits. Not saying they don't have any of that here, but I don't know if I, I think Montana and that team mentally is going to bring the energy. And Kyler knows this. I do, do the damn thing where I bring in the emotion and kind of the weird juju things comparison to what the stats say. But I really do think that Montana is going to just do some things. And SDSU has shown this season that there are times where they are just not up. They are just not motivated in there. And not saying they won't be for a national championship. That would be so stupid to say. But are they going to just bring that full force capability right off the bat? Um, you know, it's not like these players aren't hearing that they're 12 and a half point fairs. It's not that these players aren't hearing that they should finish this off strong and people are predicting them to win big. I don't know. I just got a feeling that Montana is going to keep this ugly in a way and a lot longer than people think. I don't think you're looking at a 2021 Montana state NDSU situation. So uh, Rev, I, I'd love to give you the floor here, but I'm going to roll into the next question as well from Steve Anderson while also having up on the screen here on YouTube, left side of the screen showing South Dakota state statistics, right side showing Montana, South Dakota state basically has the edge in almost everything, but four categories, which is crazy. But Steve Anderson's question here says, what matchups are you most interested to see? So I love this question because you can kind of pick what you want, but between position groups or players, what are you most interested to see when this thing kicks off uh, next Sunday? Oh, I'm glad you went on to the next question because I had nothing else to add after Kyler covered everything. So this is well done. Uh, My position, bad. No, no, you're good. That, I, was, I was like, that you because your answer is the exact same as mine. So position groups, I mentioned see the how Montana's uh, front four and the defense can hang with uh, the SCSU O-line. I think that's going to be just a, a huge match. Um, I'm interested to see how um <clears throat> how montana's wide receivers match up against uh, uh SCSU's secondary because i think that's going to be a key pivotal point as well 
And the reason why I say that is I don't know how well Montana is going to move the ball on the ground against South Dakota State. I think Clifton McDowell is going to have to use his legs to get time in the pocket and throw. And I, I mean, I think Montana's got a good uh, a good receiving core, and so if they can if they can you know play well against the the SCSU secondary, then that's a I mean this can be a, a very advantageous uh, situation for them to be in. I think those are the biggest ones. Um, you know, I hear a lot of folks honestly kind of crapping on SCSU saying, oh, they don't have an award really nominated or award winner on their defense, but there's a reason why that defense plays as a cohesive unit and there's not a standout like there is on some of the other ones. And that's not necessarily a bad thing and not necessarily a good thing. So I think it does come down to the individual matchups to the individual groups. And, um, but those are the two that I'm really keyed on keyed and on to see what happens. Yeah. Kyler, what do you think, man? What, what's going to be the, uh, going to be the two groups you're watching where you go i think this is going to matter there there's um i want to see montana's defensive line versus the offensive line and also vice versa because even though um the linebacker group and the the dbs and safeties are really strong for sdsu i haven't been that impressed by their d-line especially the ability to get to the quarterback and i know like maybe it was thumper it was like six weeks ago or someone from jack rabbit illustrated posted something um, before the playoffs and it was like this is alarming how little we have actually got to the quarterback right now luckily just the rest of that team is so stacked it, it doesn't really matter because typically you're you're already a few scores back so you know they don't have to put as much pressure on the quarterback but Montana's quarterback in my opinion is not that great now he he's athletic as hell he can run he can be dynamic when he needs to be and like even in the Furman game uh, it was a horrible quarterback play on both sides of the ball, but they both made clutch plays when they needed to, right? And so you can play bad all the time, but if you're converting on these third and longs, who cares, right? You you won the game because you made a clutch play. So if if McDowell has time and maybe he opens up the field or sees a lane where he can run, I really want to see that. And then I just want to see Mark Gronowski – try and go against someone who gets in his face and kind of tries to make him a little bit, maybe, um, maybe not as comfortable if you will, but also like the third down defense for Montana is pretty special. Um, I don't know if you have that up there, but Montana's third down defense can really create some problems And during some of the playoffs. Yeah. Third down conversion D right. Third, right. It, if, if Montana's D line is able to commit, Gronowski into these third and longs and we saw this in some of these games where Gronowski you know he had a clutch play maybe as Isaiah Davis it was a third and nine and he broke it up the middle or maybe there was a a good throw that was on the sidelines will he have the time to make those clutch plays on that third and long um so that's that's really what I'm interested in seeing because like we just mentioned earlier SDSU's O-line is behemoths they're monsters there are a whole bunch of bunch of Godzillas out there but also, maybe where Montana lacks in size, because they're not the biggest team in the nation, man, they are fast. They're physical. And Bobby Houck, that, that defensive coordinator for them, whatever, the last few years, they scheme extremely well, and they have these random blitz packages that you typically don't see. They're blitzing from everywhere. Um, and I wonder if that's going to affect the ability of Mark Gronowski to have some time to where he can wait for one of the – Yankee twins to maybe create some separation, or is he going to force something on the third and long? Kind of like what Trey Lance says when he tries to throw the ball. If you force something on the third and long, you're probably getting picked. Um, so yeah, I mean, I got, the line play is is kind of my my question marks, and then the two quarterbacks on different realms. And it's more will McDowell play better when he has sufficient time because SDSU hasn't been great at getting to the quarterback, and will Gronowski play as efficiently when he doesn't have much time because it's probably one of the best teams that SDSU has faced with getting to the quarterback. So, uh, yeah, th those are kind of what I want to see. You bounced off of mine, Kyler, because Gronowski against Montana secondary, I think is really interesting. They do have some underrated players in that secondary yeah. capable of capable of forcing turnovers. But they'll and, get yards. Yeah, those, those corners on the Yankee twins and on Hines and on the tight end and and the other players, that's going to be interesting. The one thing I'm really interested to see as well for matchups, I guess, would be Isaiah Davis against anybody. Because <laughs> yeah, a, he's a beast. 
literally a difference maker in all these South Dakota State games. And I said it as a Bison fan for years with Bruce Anderson and King Frazier and all these running backs we had. I said, do you want to know why we are oddly so good? It's the smallest thing. All of our running backs hit a linebacker, hit a corner, sometimes a defensive end, and they still get two and a half, three more yards. You add that up throughout a game. How many more possessions, how much more time, and how many more first downs do you get because of that extra effort? And Isaiah Davis does it almost every time. Yeah. So will when he gets hit, will Isaiah Davis gain two and a half yards, or will he gain six? Because if he gains five to six after first contact, Montana's in a crap ton of trouble. Well, like and, ton. and now you're, you're Montana. It's, in my opinion, the best tackling team in the nation. They do not miss tackles. I mean, that's one thing. They don't try and arm tackle. They swarm, and they don't let you get that many extra yards. Now, what we saw against North Dakota State is during that overtime, they're starting to give a little extra yards compared to what they were given you know, the rest of the game. But especially that first half, those first three quarters, dude, that is a fast physical. They're un they're not that big again, but for some reason, that just front seven from Montana plays different. And, and Isaiah, Ta Isaiah Davis is a difference maker, so I love that because I actually think he is the reason why SDSU is as good as they are. I, I think you know the running game and the line are better than the rest, which the running game and the line doesn't get as much credit as – the Yankee twins as the, the tight ends as Mark Kronowski. But I think those are actually the bread and butter systems on how SDSU is as dominant as they are. But um, yeah, that front seven from Montana is going to make things interesting. It should be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And the, uh, the offense, we'll see if it becomes a fireworks game at all. Joshua Hoffman, great South Dakota state fan. Hope to see you down there again, Josh, if you're making the trip, Montana needs to score 22 points to have a chance to win. Prove me wrong. He wants to be proved wrong on this argument. I had an interesting take on the Mega Live uh, there, Rev, which you hosted and I appreciate. So before I toss this to you, I really think because of that ugly style and forcing things to go crazy, Montana could force this into that NDSU James Madison 2017 style of just gross low scoring now both those teams played pretty clean outside of a few turnovers but i think they could keep it lower than people are imagining i remember 2018 ndsu eastern washington oh ndsu is gonna run through them and it's gonna be this big thing i'm like i don't think so like i've talked to kyler i've talked to eagles fans i've watched that team you guys are kind of crazy even the ones who weren't bison fans and then I remember the, the years where they're like, it's just going to be a defensive slugfest. I'm like, I actually think they're going to score more than you think. The semifinal game, James Madison, NDSU in 2021. I do think that this could go a lot lower than people think. So I, uh, Josh, I'm not really giving you much of a reason, but I think Montana could make it ugly enough to where South Dakota State, similar against Montana State, just doesn't get that many points. So what do you think, Rev? What do you think? Well, Bloodbath or not? The question is that they need to score 22 points. And the answer is yes, because even if they keep it low scoring against South Dakota State, even if they throw South Dakota State off of their game, they still have to score against a very damn good team, against a very damn good defense, right? And I still think even with that, they're going to have to put up three scores. Maybe it's not 22, maybe it's 21. Maybe it's a 21-17 type game. But they're still going to have to score enough because, again, the, the South Dakota State offense with the weapons that they have, they're just that good. I, you know, It may not be the blowout that I think it's going to be because I kind of think it's going to be one. It could be a close game. It could be Montana wins. But to Josh's question, yes, Montana's going to have to score at least three touchdowns to, to win. Even – playing the the football equivalent of shaka smarts havoc uh you know style of <laughs> basketball like that even if they're doing that they're still gonna have to score and i think they'll at least have to score three touchdowns jack not that this is a no but no grizz fan wants to become to the bobcats but the closest thing for sdsu to lose this year 20 to 16 a victory for the jack rabbits at home against montana state uh, also beating southern illinois i think that was 17 to 7 or 17 to 10 or something kyler what do you what do you think man they need 22 um, no, they don't need 22. I think they're going to need 28. Now, I don't care how you get 28. Um, 
17 you know, to 10, South Dakota State beat Southern Illinois. Yeah, it was a seven point game. So, so SDSU's had a few close games, but it's it's not normal. But um, I don't care how you get those four touchdowns. But you know, if it's a pick six, if it's a return, if it's two rushing touchdowns from McDowell, I don't care. But I think the winner of this game is going to have over 28 points. So uh, I mean, we're not giving our predictions yet. You've probably already tell by the tone of my voice. Uh, but I, I think the winner of this game has to have at least 28 points. Um, so, no, I don't think 22 is enough. Yeah. Uh, Matt, I, I think you're wrong thinking it's going to be this ugly, low-scoring game. Um, even if it's 35-28, something like that, I think you're going to need to at least score above 28 if you're going to come home with the W on either side. On Jackrabbits, yeah. I mean, I think you got to score 28 because um, you, you – even if you shut down Montana's offense, who knows? They have some playmakers on defense who can return it to the house. They have mm-hmm. Junior Bergen who's just waiting to get that punt that SDSU is going to kick it to. So, um, or at least play good field position to get them in field goal range, right? So, yeah, I don't know what the weather's going to be like. I would assume one of those close games that SDSU played, if there wasn't Cheney style wind, I um, mean, they're not used to throwing in Cheney style wind. You know, because they're pansies. That South Dakota State offense. Mark Gronowski is not Eric Berry. He can't throw in wind. What a bum! Just trying to <laughs> rile up some fans, guys. Um, then maybe we'll see what happens. But but yeah, I, I think one of those offenses is significantly better than the other. Again, you could tell by the undertone of my voice who I think is significantly better. So I think you got to at least score twenty eight plus. Yeah. So well, the weather. I was going to say the weather forecast for Frisco as of right now is 57 degrees and sunny right so What's weather the wind <laughs> not uh 10 to 20. So... oh sorry granowski maybe you can throw it down the field <laughs> but the point i was going to say is i don't want to make it sound like i was just completely dumping or dismissing montana with that i think to kyler's point he's 100 correct that they're either side's gonna have to score a lot of points because there's enough explosiveness on both teams right where you have a junior Bergen or you have a Yankee twin, or you have Isaiah Davis breaking one. Like there's so much explosive opportunity there that I don't think it's going to be a low scoring game. You're going to have to put up the points. Well, let me, let me add this because the question was specifically Montana oriented, right, Matt? Yeah. The question is Montana needs to score 22. Yep. Montana needs to at least score 28. South Dakota state may not have to score half that much. Yeah. So um, again, we're going to protect our game soon, but um <laughs> Yeah, Montana at least needs 28. <laughs> South Dakota State at least needs three to secure the win. Oh, man, I hope this is on. Uh, if the Grizz pull the up, pull the upset, it'll be hilarious to see that. on. I'm a fan. Look at my leg. Yeah, that's true. You are a fan. Um, according to Google, if you're watching on YouTube, by the way, this game's already gone final. There were no points scored. <laughs> Nothing happened, oh, according to Google. See, it literally says like I final. Said, SCSU just needed to score three. The game. I wasn't wrong. The game is over. Uh, guys, Steve Anderson, Jordan Thule here. Uh, Steven Anderson said, what does either team need to do to win or lose the game? And what are the three things each team needs to do to win the game, says Jordan? I think we covered winning a lot. I think there's a lot of winning and a lot of what we need to do. So I think Steve and Jordan up to this point will be satisfied there. But I'm going to bounce off their question to the lose part. So what will? what is a thing that a t- these teams will do? What will SDSU do or Montana do that causes them to lose the game what do you think uh kyler what would montana do that causes them to lose like what's one thing and what about south dakota state um i'm gonna piss off one fan based on the, my second part of the question uh <laughs> just because i want to rile them up Clarify. but um here's what montana needs to do to lose the game they need to play their typical offense sorry it's just not that good um even when you replace mcdowell it's still not that great of an offense and you're going against the best defense you will see all year. So you need to have something spectacular in order to not lose. And really, you've got to establish a run, which, again, I I don't know if they're going to be able to do. So Montana, if you just play your typical offense that you have played the last five weeks outside of the Montana State game, that's probably going to lose. You're going to have to play a little more special than that. Now, South Dakota State, how you're going to lose, this is what I'm excited for. He's not that guy. You got to stop the run and force Gronowski to throw. CSU people, they think they've got me because he made two good throws in one game. They're like, see, Kyler's completely wrong. They still ran for like 280 yards and murdered on the ground. 
So no, you have to try and stop Isaiah Davis, which Matt just said is damn near impossible. And I agree. If you stop the run and force Gronowski to take over a game, I'm not sure, and I still have yet to see it, can he take over game? I'm not saying Gronowski is not amazing. I think he's a really good quarterback, especially for this level. He could play power five. Uh, I'm not I'm not saying he's not a bad quarterback when I say that, but I have never seen him take over a game because he's needed to. I want to see the run get completely stopped, and maybe Montana's front seven can do that. And watch Gronowski when there is tons of pressure on him because they can't move the ball down the field unless he's throwing the ball. What happens? And I think that's Montana's only way to win. You got to force it in probably the Walter Payton award winner's hands, which is dangerous to say because he's probably going to win the Walter Payton. So it even sounds ridiculous that I'm saying this. You got to force it in potentially the Walter Payton award winner's hand and make him drive the ball down the field by himself. Not, not, not Isaiah Davis, not any of their monster running backs. Force him by himself. And that could be way harder said than done, but I think that's only how the Jackrabbits can lose is Montana completely shuts down the run game. The Grizz side of the house is for the Grizz to lose. They need to be on the sidelines, and Bobby Houck before the game is going, this is what got us here, and our formula can can get us the win. Let's just stick and do what we do. Uh, you are yeah. doomed. You have, yeah. to, you have to adapt and be better than that. You have to be tactical all the way down to every small little thing. How NDSU upset James Masson in 2017 was every small little detail down to the spy on Brian Shore, down to the specific way that this receiver is going on this route, so we know they're doing this. Okay, we are almost intentionally going to just run three run plays to burn the clock here and go three and out, knowing they'll probably stuff us. Like, literally tactical possession at every single moment. Yeah, You have to do that. And uh, for South Dakota State to lose, I think that one's simple. Uh, you, the fans have seen it. They've seen it on Twitter. They're like, this team should be doing so much better. Like, what the heck? And that's just them not. I, it's just like they're not getting up and they're not ready to go. Quarter one, quarter two. So, so are that, you are you thing. only saying the reason why they played close games is just it's not credit to the other defense who has schemed well. It's just because they haven't tried hard. I yeah, I think they're that good. I I put them in that realm. Yeah, I, I seriously I think they're think, that good. But come on, give the other team some credit. They have made them not that team or not that confident by getting to the dang quarterback. I just, I really think that I think teams that are that elite sometimes have off days and it wouldn't be that pretty if it went to second time around. Yep. That's just, that really, that's the most cop out answer. You, you said the other answer, the question about the special teams was a cop out answer. That is the most cop out answer. They just didn't try hard. <laughs> you mad drink a Red Bull. <laughs> oh man. I'm going to have to take one. Rev, so you what do you got? Bleep out the F. <laughs> yeah. Rev. <laughs> Rev, what uh, what do you got for the reason to lose? All right, for South Dakota State to lose this game, they have to score less points than the Montana Grizzlies. That's solid. Now that's not yeah. cop out. That is perfect. That's solid. That's, that's, that's and that's I mean, and I'm, that sounds facetious, and it is, but it's not because they have to not play their game to lose. They have to be disrupted. They have to uh, Isaiah Davis has to be you know held to one yard a game a, a carry right. Yankee twins have to get the yips. All these things are going to have to come together for South Dakota State to not score more points than uh, Mon Montana. And for Montana to lose this game, they have to do what they didn't. They have, they have to be pedestrian, right? They have to be uh, just their normal thing. They can't be creative. They have to be running the, what they've been doing this year. And I'm not saying that they haven't been a, a good offense because they have. They turned it on back after the year. But – you know, there's so much film on on what on what they're running that they they have to come up with something. They have to run the annexation of Puerto Rico or something. They have to have some some tricks up their sleeve. Uh, and that's what and and that if they don't, then it's going to be a long day for them. It's going to be a long weekend for us because we're not going to get a lot of sleep and it's going to be a lot of fun. And a lot of fans are planning to do that same thing. Which brings us to our final question here, guys, from Andrew Markham, who we'll see down there in Frisco. Our man, he says, whose fan base will travel better and whose fan base drinks more over the weekend? Okay, so <laughs> this is great because both of these folks are living in colder places. Montana's more pretty. But they're definitely the kind who probably drink three, four beers after work because there's nothing to do for the most part or they're snowed in. And they haven't had vitamin D like us North Dakotans in three months. 
so they can put back the hard whiskeys. Um, these are not cocktail drinking individuals, right? These people can throw it back. Two marks okay? with Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Two marks with Matt. We learned they, about it. They ain't drinking it. Yeah. So what do you think? Which fan base will travel better? Whose fan base drinks more? Kyler, what do you got? I mean, unfortunately for Montana, I, I think we're just going to see more South Dakota State fans. And it's because like what oh, happened on the two marks with Matt, with Brendan. I mean, more South Dakota State fans in August were way more confident in their team than Montana was. And Montana fans are always confident, but there is a big discrepancy of not going to a national title in 15 years versus repeating and being the overwhelming favorite. Now, if no one could buy tickets and maybe they all got sold on the exact same time, maybe you'd see more Montana fans. But even that I don't think is the case when it's in Frisco because for one, if you're from South Dakota State, you can drive down to Frisco. It's not that far of a drive. When you're on the other side of the country, especially battling winter, it's a little bit difficult. So even like that 2018 um, national title game, there are so many NDSU fans who would come up to me and go, I thought there would be more cars that had Eastern Washington on it. You dumb? It was a 38-hour drive through the Rockies and all these mountains, whatever, where you only had to drive 12 hours. A big difference. Yes, we are all flying. And then you see the, the crazy expensive tickets that Adam was saying on your Two Marks with Matt episode. If you guys haven't listened, go, go watch Two Marks with Matt. It was awesome. You had a thumper. You had Adam. So to a Montana fan, a South Dakota State fan, and then this bum drinking Red Bulls, not Marks. Um, but he was even saying like tickets, flights were like 800 to 1200 bucks when it was announced. I'm sorry, that is a burden for a lot of people. And then you don't have the ability to just drive, what is it, 12 hours, 10 hours? It's a much further drive from Missoula, Montana to Frisco than it is from Huge. Brookings straight shot down. Uh, the 45 basically until you hit Dallas. So it is a little bit of a difference, but I mean, Montana as a fan base, way more powerful than SDSU as a fan base. And it's not close. So if they were in the middle, maybe if it was a game in Denver or something like that, and they sold tickets on the same time, it'd probably be 80 to 20 Montana. But the difference is SDSU got to buy all their tickets in August where I don't think a lot of Montana fans did. And then it is half the distance to Frisco. So even if you can't afford a plane ticket, it's 1200 bucks for a family plus tickets plus a stay. That is a very expensive holiday for one game. An eight-hour, 10-hour drive, whatever it is, I don't know. I could be way off. It is quite a bit closer than Missoula. So, yeah, I think we're going to see a majority of SDSU fans. And people will probably you know, go, oh, there was more of us than you guys. Ha ha, you're a tennis section. No, that's really not what it is because if you put this game in Denver – and you got to buy tickets at the same time, and plane tickets were the same price. Whatever you would see, 80, 20, and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be close. Now, what team can drink more? I got this, Kyler. I oh, it's it. SDSU, and it's not close. Those guys are giants. Yeah, <laughs> those will drink more in terms of there a human. Is every S one SDSU fan is equivalent to two Montana fans, <laughs> and you know, sure, Montana doesn't do much outside of drink and not brush their teeth. That is true. It is very fair. It happens. But Brendan is tiny for a South Dakota. I mean, I saw that at the bar, and, and that dude is 8 foot tall, 395 pounds. And, I mean, Chris Hammond and I, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them from the 5'9 and under guys. Um, but when you're battling with this 8 foot 9, literally giant, like if you chop down the beanstalk, that whole country is going away. South Dakota as a country, it <laughs> dies. It falls off. All the giants die. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, they both drink. Who cares? But Thumper. yeah, they're closer to Wisconsin, so South Dakota has to drink more. Yeah. Your comp of Thumper being small is um, I'm a, How I Met Your Mother is one of my favorite shows of all time, and one of the main characters, we're, Eric we're Marshall, again. his uh, his whole family, it's always, all his brothers. From Minnesota. And, he's 6'5", and, and he's tiny. Yeah, they're all huge, and his famous line is Lily actually calls him small, and he goes, just because I'm the runt of the litter, Jesus, I'm only 6'5". Yeah. All right, right, so Helton, this is why I'm going to say, this is why Montana's going to drink more. This is why they're going to drink more. They're not going to travel more. Here's where they're going to drink more. 
because the first time you go to Frisco, South Dakota State in COVID doesn't really count. There wasn't enough people here. Last year, they all got slammed and hammered the day or two before, and they all went, oh, man, tailgating the game was kind of actually pretty rough. So they'll take it easier in preparation for the game. Did you well, see the Grizz, their tailgate? The Grizz are Worked. too many too many rookies. They're gonna they're gonna overdrink the days before. It's a mistake. They're gonna do it. They're gonna be like, I can go all weekend, and that's why they'll drink more. They're not gonna travel more, just because it's a rookie mistake to go too hard on Friday and Saturday before the game. I've done so, that before. Yep, that's rookie mistake. No, nope. I threw up at the game. You're welcome. <laughs> So interesting fact: it is double the distance hour-wise from Missoula yeah. to Frisco than it is Brookings to Frisco. Brookings to Frisco is only about 200 miles further than it is from Frisco, Texas, to El Paso, Texas. Right? Just to give so you an like idea. Hours. Yeah, it's about 12. It's a 12-hour drive. Okay. Um, now, to Kyler's point, I think the the SESU guys are tall, and they can drink. And I remember standing at the local last year with Matt Tollison and Chad Myros and Brendan and, and then at the tailgate with like Dallas and going, you know, I'm not a short person and I felt tiny next to those redwoods of the plains. Um, so they can put down a lot, but I think to your point, I think the Montana fans, they're going to be very exuberant because it's their first time back in, you know, in years, right. It's their first time in Frisco. They're gonna. I think you're gonna see the SCSU folks who may have been at the bar whole time this weekend go do some other things this time, right? They may no. go over to AT and T Stadium and go tour the stadium. They may go drive three and a half hours to get barbecue, right? They may go do all these other things because last time when they were here, they were there for the party and for the environment. This time, they've done the party. They've done the environment. They're gonna go see some other parts of 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 what North Texas has to offer, and so I think you're gonna see more Montana folks day drinking at the bars. I think you'll see more SCSU folks showing up about four in the afternoon, five in the afternoon, and start pounding them, pounding them. And then um, I know there's a shit ton of bush light at the local, um, which is good because it's great to have water on hand. Yeah, it's water. So yeah, it's great <laughs> yeah, to have water. On hand. <laughs> well, since we're rambling about drinking and a good party nothing goes better with a good uh, beer or whiskey than some tacos taco king coming to you from bright and sunny fargo north dakota it's time for a taco bet and time for you losers to pay up oh this is why you subscribe to youtube ladies and gentlemen the king of tacos brian thompson is on the pod special guest number two rolling in taco king welcome how's, aboard my man how's Sound? everybody doing we are doing good, good brian i love Ex- you <laughs> you love me but are you ready for frisco no oh. not with you <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> i'm waiting king. for you at the airport and gonna be ready <laughs> oh dude it's going to be so much fun taco king of course is going to be part of the uh the kingdom airbnb is basically what we've claimed it now he's going to be down there with us make sure you guys come up he's the only one who's remotely close to the size of most of those south dakotans uh but he will not he's be wearing five, SDSU gear. Six. Oh he's just, yeah right. he's just 320 pounds of pure muscle i'm wearing my cowboy boots they get me to six three <laughs> <laughs> uh it's gonna be awesome well Taco King, um, we haven't seen this. We're going to pop it up here. You have sent yep. me a taco bet, and it reads, uh, I'll let you reveal it, my man, for our folks on Apple and Spotify listening. Brian Thompson here, King of Tacos. What do you got for us? The over-under 7.5 lead with one and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Okay, so this is not team-specific. You are saying that. The score on the scoreboard either is over or under seven and a half points with a minute and 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Correct. That's where we're at. Okay. Enticing. Much better than anything I could think up of, as our loyal listeners know. Uh, I Boy, I think we'll start. You know what, Rev? You are have been so gracious to us, so I'm going to toss it to you first. What do you think? Over or under on that seven and a half points? I'm going to take the under, and here's why. <clears throat> First quarter, I think, of this is going to start off slow. I think they're going to be feeling each other out. It's going to kind of, kind of be like boxing in the first couple of rounds, and they're kind of just throwing to see what lands sort of thing. I don't think that anybody will have a lead over a touchdown. I think it would be like a 10-7 to 7 or maybe a 14-10 to 10 or 14-7 sort of game or maybe not even that high. I think you'll see everything open up towards the back half of the second quarter and the second half if one team were to be more jacked up than the other one per se and, and you know take the other team to the woodshed. So for this – 
taking the under. All righty. Uh, Kyler, um, for me, this is really easy. Uh, it's definitely over. It is definitely over. An, definitely an over, yeah. I just think the, the Grizz are going to come out hot. <laughs> well, you're Kyler. going team specific. Oh, oh did I say? Oh, shoot. Oh, man, that was a slip. Uh, and I can't edit it out. I guess I guess I'll leave it in the podcast. Oopsie. Tyler, what do you got? Oopsie. Oopsie. Um, 7.5 with a minute 30 left. Hmm. I'm going to take... Crap. This, this is where it gets... Taco King, screw you, you bastard. Um, I can handle it. I think the first half is going to be pretty close. Um, kind of like what Dustin was saying. One team's going to finally figure out the other in the second half and, and maybe expose them. But I think one team, before they crash and burn, is going to be really jacked up, really hyped. Not, not jacked up as in the sense of the Jackrabbits, but I think one team is going to be playing a little extra, just like they would be playing a typical Power 5 team before they finally get murdered down the road. So let me go the under because I think it'll be a seven point first quarter. Seven you know, point, right? That would be the under. Taco the King, under. it's rare that I make them as good as you for these bets. But I, I did have a few this year. I love when it's so good that Kyler he does it, he goes this and he pauses and he's like, uh, it's it's just it's glorious. I like the last one you made where it was like, Do you think Montana and South Dakota State are going to have 18,000 fans total in the game. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a no idiot. brainer. You stupid, <laughs> stupid son of a bitch. To be fair, <laughs> Kyler, you just said 18,000 fans in the game, and there was way less in the game than, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's way that's less. True, but to, to be fair, Matt had never been to a Washington Grizz and knowing that, you know, Montana fans. Me growing up, there, there's nothing really else to do out there. I mean, it's cold and there's beer at the stadium. So, you know, even if you don't like football, why not go? Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that is a great way to promote to other people to Taco King as we end our statement. Even if you don't like football, Frisco is a good time. Uh, football is the cherry on top for hanging out with folks and having a good one. So uh, we appreciate you hopping on uh, with us, Taco King. Enjoy your week in Fargo, flying in Thursday. And uh, any last words before we get to our quick hits? Nah, everybody, see you in Frisco. See you three fine gentlemen in Frisco. Matt, I said Thursday, so <laughs> leaving that one on you, buddy, that you're flying down Friday. Maybe that that's okay. Uh, Friday. But Friday we'll have Friday. a margarita waiting for you. Oh, you guys are the best. All right. Thanks, Taco King. And with that, guys, off to the quick hits. Just because your question is answered quickly doesn't mean we don't care. These are the quick hit questions of the week. Well, going down to Frisco, you think we would just include two or three people on this show? Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you subscribe to YouTube, because right now you're seeing a fourth face on the screen. And joining us for our quick hit questions, the GOAT of FCS media, the man himself, Sam Herter of Hero Sports, coming on just for this next segment with us to break down some Montana and South Dakota State. Uh, Sam, before we get into these quick hit questions from the fans, I guess I just wanted to give you an opportunity to, what, what's your what's your travel plans look like for you heading down to Frisco? Are you there all week or, or when, are you, when are you heading down after the new year? So I'll be getting to Frisco the Thursday uh, before the title game. Uh, it's a few days early, but they have media availability on Friday with all the players or not all the players, a handful of players and coaches as well. And so um, that usually leaves Friday to, to do those and then all day Saturday to kind of hang out, do, do some work, uh, have some uh, enjoyable time as well. But yeah, I usually get there a few days before the game. Awesome, man. Well, we appreciate you hopping on. It seems like once a year, we at least get you for a little bit. And I know you're the busiest man in all of the FCS. So we appreciate it. And uh, we'll kick the quick hits right to you. We'll start the first question off for you from Mr. Roger Fisher. And you just dropped an amazing article just today on Hero Sports about breaking down Montana and South Dakota State, the special teams, the offense, the defense. It was a great read. Make sure everybody checks that out. Roger, though, says Coach Hauk is great at identifying and exploiting mismatches. Are there any mismatches that he can exploit when facing the Jackson Frisco? A great defense there for the Rabbits. What do you think there, Mr. Herter? Yeah, I mean, I, there's it's hard to 
it's going to be hard to exploit any weaknesses for South Dakota State offensively uh, or defensively. I just think they're they're so good on offense and defense. Um, I think one thing though, uh, I think it's it's kind of a key that a lot of people are talking about is Montana is going to have to hit something on special teams, whether it's a block, whether it's return or something like that. And that's where Bobby Houck is so good. Um, he's basically the the special teams coordinator along with being the head coach, and he dives into the film and um, if. He'll look at every single thing, every single game, whether alignment is off a little bit on punt protection, he will he can maybe scheme up a punt, a punt block. Or if you're not responsible in some of your uh, coverage lanes on kick on kickoff uh, coverage, you can exploit that and, and dial something up on how they return kicks. And so I think South Dakota State is pretty good on special teams, but there might be you know something there that, that Bobby Houck and Montana can exploit. Um, I think offensively for the Grizz, maybe... I don't think they're going to be able to, to, you know, run power a whole lot. I don't think they're going to be able to dice up South Dakota State secondary, but I do think if they spread South Dakota State out, they do a lot of design quarterback run with, Clif- with Clifton McDowell. That's probably your best bet to move the ball against the, the, the best defense in the FCS. All righty. We'll see if uh, Montana can take advantage of some things, which people have just not been able to do against South Dakota State. Guys, Joshua Hoffman, Jack Rabbit's fan, caught him last year in Frisco. Hopefully we'll see him again. Who would be your dream broadcast crew for this game to be? Uh, it doesn't matter if it's past, current, or history. Dream broadcast crew. We might as well go around the horn here. I don't know how you couldn't do John Madden and Al Michaels. That's how I was raised. So that's an easy call for me. Rev, what do you think, man? A dream broadcast crew for that game. This is Howard Cosell and Pat Summerall. And maybe John Madden also. I think that'd be the best ones. Throw them together. Mr. Neal? Yeah, you got to keep it FCS. So, yeah, John Madden, you know, Cal Poly. I know they weren't, you know, FCS way back in the day. Tony Romo would be pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, you got to give it to the GOAT of all things FCS and go with my friend down there in the left corner, Sam Herter. He might be in the right corner for you guys listening. Who cares? But um, Or Randy Moss. We could easily replace Sam Herter with Randy Moss. <laughs> Wouldn't be able to catch either of them. They're both pretty quick on their feet, I think. Uh, guys, right here we have from Asa. He says, do you think with Entz moving to USC, will any of NDSU's defensive studs from this year follow? It's interesting. They do have uh, Derek, uh, one of their guys, one of their big D tackles in the portal right now, who has offers from USC, no surprise, but also like Cal and, I mean, West Virginia's in there. He's got a few other offers, so that's a big one. But that's the only starter for NDSU that's currently in the portal. They just got some really big news that they're offensive guys. Uh, big offensive lineman, um, along with Cole Wininski, awesome safety, is going to be coming back next year. So NDSU is kind of, you know, they've rode the portal wave pretty well so far. And that'll be the only NDSU talk we'll have for the podcast for now. But we'll see what comes with the next coming weeks. Uh, Mr. Herter, this is an interesting one. Ethan Dixon, just coming off of that topic there of NDSU portal players. He says, can the FCS compete with FBS when it comes to retaining players due to NIL? Now, I know Montana and South Dakota State are about to have a window where their players could jump in after the championship. But how do you think the FCS could continue to compete, if at all, with that FBS level? Yeah, the FCS is not going to be able to go dollar for dollar uh, with some of these NIL collectives. I mean, Gray Zabel, the NDSU offensive lineman, apparently turned out an absurd NIL deal, um, half a million dollars somewhere around there. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of six figure offers out there and NDSU's NIL collective can't offer 500K or even 100K. But if you can get your guy maybe 10K or 20K, that's maybe enough for them to stay. If they're really bought into the program, it's hard to turn down that level of money. But at the same time, 20K is still a lot of money for a college student. And so you can't go dollar for dollar. But I think having an NIL collective for your program no matter where you're at in the fcs is important because if you can at least hey we can't we can't give you 100k but is 10k enough for you to stay for some guys it might be no sorry 100k i'm gonna have to take that but for other guys it might be yeah 10k is enough for me i can fly my family to games i can drive back to my hometown you know on christmas 10k is enough for me to stay so can't go dollar for dollar but i do think nil collectives are are really important for fcs teams to have can i I have a follow-up i know it's quick hit questions but yeah hit it (laughs) Sam, do you think any of the HBCUs, because I get their athletic budget is very small across the board, but with kind of the turnout that's been going on with kind of the upward trajectory with fan bases, uh, celebrity engagement, do you think maybe, if anything, some of the HBCU programs might be able to throw some ludicrous type of NIL deals compared to most FCS? 
I could see that, yeah. And I think I'm pretty sure Grambling was the first ever known uh, collective in in the FCS, and so they they have some going. Um, and yeah, HBCU fans are the most uh, passionate fans in the FCS, in my opinion. So I think they could all get uh, pretty healthy NIL deals. Could they have those 500, you know, half a million right. offers out there? Probably not. But um, you know, I think maybe they could get up to the 50k, 100k if they really, really like a guy because they do have that level of passion and support. Come on, Dr. Dre, let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> drop that money. That'd be awesome. Uh, Rev, Dustin Perman here. I'm pretty sure this is a trolling question, making fun of the past of where we are now. He says, uh, can the Grizz control all the distractions? A quarterback change, losing to NAU, calling for Bobby to be fired, etc. Can they can they throw those distractions out to focus enough to play a complete error-free game to beat the Jacks? Dustin, pretty sure he's trolling of the... Uh, what we thought was a disaster early with Montana. Um, how do you feel about Montana as a whole, Rev, right now with the season? To answer maybe this question for maybe the last time, Kyler, we'll let Rev take it. I don't know because, you know, they're not going to have their full attendance there and their band had to be funded to show up. No, like, just just stop with this. Like, I mean, it, it's going to be, you know, they're going to have to play error-free football either way. You know, we they got crapped on in September deservingly because Montana was a bad team in September. They made the, the the turnaround that needed to do. How made the right decision, got rid of Vidlak, brought in McDowell, um, you know, changed around the play calls. There's a whole bunch of different things that happened that made Montana a better team. And so even though they lost to Northern Arizona, who lost to Utah Tech in September, they still managed to get to Frisco. But you have to realize that that's part of what happened this season. And that shows why Hawk should have probably been, in my opinion, the coach of the year. But uh, but no, they'll, they just have to play error-free football. That's it. That's all. Just one more game. Always fun to respond, and uh, I love when we have Sam Herder here. One of my favorite things to like for Sam's Twitter, if you follow him, is especially with it was NDSU fans, now it's SDSU fans. I even saw Grizz fans being like, nobody believes in us, and they're like the number two seed. Yeah. And so I love when Herder's like, who's saying this? <laughs> who, who in the national narrative is telling you this? But, you know, that's that's how fans are. They're passionate. Uh, Alex Kenkel, we're going to see him down there, South Dakota State fan. Who's your favorite left-handed tromb- trombonist? Uh, I had to Google this. They're very rare. My cousin Andrew was left-handed and played trombone. Alex, he was terrible, but he's my favorite because he's the only one I've heard play. But uh, there's a guy named Slide Hampton who is in the Jazz Music Hall of Fame. I looked him up on Wikipedia. Just telling folks. It's a pretty cool story if you look him up there. So thanks for the research, Alex. Uh, Joshua Hoffman comes back around the bend here, Mr. Sam Herter, and says, does South Dakota State's experience help them at all in this game? I think it does. Yeah, I think being on that stage, being familiar with how everything uh, works in Frisco. Uh, I know that they've kind of dimmed down a little bit the the number of off the field activities they do for the players. They used to do like the barbecue bowl um, and like top golf and like charity events and, you know, a bunch of media stuff. I think they've they've kind of slimmed back on that a little bit. But uh, even just knowing how to how to build yourself up to this game. I mean, knowing the stage as well, I think is is, is pretty big for South Dakota mm-hmm. State because we've seen some teams that uh, have been there for the first time and they come out to a slow start. I mean, there's the infamous Jacksonville State thing where half of their players miss the run out because they're too busy talking trash to NDSU players. And by the time they realized they were in the <laughs> national title game, it was like 21 nothing. And so I think being comfortable on that stage is is really important and kind of an underrated factor in this one. Sam Loki throws out my favorite favorite ndsu top five story of ndsu football right there i love that story uh zachary carlton uh mr 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 incarnate word himself which fcs fans nation podcast contributor is most likely to need me to serve as their dd championship weekend oh this is a good one so if we take the house because the house is uh herder's not staying with us but it's myself rev kyler we've got chris hammond we got jamie williams and taco king himself who is most likely going to need me to serve as their DD? I mean, I feel like I'm an easy call because you guys know how much of a lightweight I am, but I think I'll be a little bit more cautious this year. So let's go with the heavy hitters. You got the Rev. I know Kyler can put him down. Chris ain't no slum. And Jamie's been showing us in Florida that he can put him down. And Taco King's a monster. So I don't know, Kyler. What do you think? Who would most likely need a DD if you threw Matt out of the equation here? Yeah, you got to throw Matt out because that's just not a fair battle. <laughs> this is like, you know, Division three NAIA versus Division one. Um, probably Chris Hammond, just because that little bastard won't stop even at 5 a.m. Now, 
Now, he'll get drunk way faster than all of us, but he'll keep going. He's also, you know, 40 years younger than the Rev, 30 years younger than Matt and I. So, you know, he's still a child, but yeah, he'll be up till 5 a.m. still drinking and then want to get up at 7 a.m. And first thing he'll do is hand me a beer and I'll never say no. But um, yeah, <laughs> age is on, on, not on our side. So I'm going to go with little Hammond, the Hobbit himself. Zach is uh, one of the nicest humans on planet Earth, and we hope to see him and the rest of the uh, FCS poll guys down there in Frisco. All right, last one here, Mr. Herder out of the quick hits is from, uh, it's a combo, Peter Belgardi and Tim Rask. I combined their questions together. Peter said, if the Jacks win, is there anybody that can stop them in the FCS? And are their chances to beat Oklahoma State next year increased? And Tim Rask says, looking beyond the championship, who's the way too early top 10 going into next year? Where does South Dakota State go after losing this graduating class? You've been really on top of things. Literally, NDSU fans, they text me, Sam, and they go, hey, what does South Dakota State lose next year? And because they think I know things, and I just screenshot your tweets and send them out. Um, what do you think about South Dakota State beyond this year? And we'll talk about this a lot more on our post-Natty podcast for our subscribers out there. What do you think, Mr. Herter? Yeah, as of right now, uh, South Dakota State has... I believe 34 seniors on their roster, uh, 18 of them uh, are going to be done after this year, which means 16 seniors this year are coming back next year as, as super duper uh, seniors. They also have, I think, 18 juniors right now. And so they have 34 seniors this year and they'll have 34 seniors uh, next year, if my math is correct. Um, Mark Ranowski, I'm pretty sure is going to be coming back. He has two more years of eligibility. I've heard he's accepted into grad school. My guess is Mark Granowski is going to come back next year for South Dakota State. And then in 2025, he's going to explore his options of, you know, maybe maybe going to the transfer portal. Because by that point, he's done everything uh, he's, he's had to do at, at South Dakota State. And it's probably a two-time major uh, for, for school-wise for South Dakota State. So he's back. Adam Bach is coming back. Um, I think two or three offensive linemen are coming back for starters. Uh, Mar Johnson will be back. Uh, Griffin Wilde, who's going to be the next big thing at wide receiver, uh, he's coming back. Uh, I know South Dakota State is very high on Angel Johnson at running back. Uh, they have some young tight ends and offensive linemen that are going to be back. Tucker Large, I think, is only a sophomore. Uh, one of their starting cornerbacks is going to be back. Dallas Beanham, off the top of my head. Um, so they have a lot of guys coming back. I think they should be preseason number one, um, just based off of the guys they have coming back. It's way too early to do a, a way too early top 10 just because you don't know <laughs> who's coming back, uh, who's transferring, who's using their extra year of eligibility. Um, I do think South Dakota State should be one. Montana brings back a decent amount of people. They should be preseason number two. The Bison, I, I know, Matt, you said you we're only going to talk about NDSU in that one question, but talking about transfers, <laughs> I think there's above – an above 50% chance that Tyler Roll gets an FBS coordinator job. And if that happens, I think there's an above 50% chance that both Cam Miller, um, or maybe just one, one of the two Cam Miller or Cole Payton, maybe both they transfer uh, out if Tyler Roll does leave. So I don't really know where to put NDSU preseason wise, but they might be number three. And honestly, number four, I'll probably go with Montana state. I know they lose uh, a few key guys, but I think they're loaded uh, coming back. And so I think that's going to be the top four. After that, I don't really know because Idaho loses a lot. Albany loses a lot. Furman loses a lot. Um, South Dakota actually brings back a decent amount. I think Villanova has a decent amount of guys coming back, but I couldn't even give you a top 10 uh, right now. So there, there's there's my top four, at least. It's going to be Dakota and Montana heavy. I don't want to correct Sam, but number three is going to obviously be Eastern Washington. <laughs> the, number the four is obviously going to be SFA. We just know that's what it's going to be. Facts. You know, facts right there, Sam. Facts. Yeah, Sam, uh, Sam, the unbiased one out of that take. Make sure you uh, cite me in your article when you do that, and they show up as three and four. Right. They actually put NDSU as three, like, in their worst year, they go to a semifinal. Ooh, what a shitty program. They are just the worst. Can't stand them. <laughs> to, uh, to end the quick hit questions, uh, we just really appreciate you taking the time, Sam. I know you're insanely busy. We hope to catch you and see you in Frisco. Any final things you'd like to plug or say for Hero Sports yourself before we hit the final weekend, sir? Uh, not a whole lot. Um, just uh, HeroSports.com will have plenty of articles next week. Um, I'll get a podcast out <clears throat> next week. It's hopefully my voice is, is a little better to do a longer uh, podcast uh, for next week. But yeah, I'll, I'll be mingling. Uh, I'm going to go to, uh, I believe it's called The Local. That's a South Dakota State bar. I'll be there. Um, I'll go to a Montana bar uh, as well. So I, I got to work during the day, but at night I'll go out and mingle with some fans and hope to get out to 
uh, I'm going to be very unbiased with my bar choosing. So one night it'll be South Dakota State, the other the other night it'll be Montana. And, it, and Frisco is really fun, uh, just because you get to see you know all the different fan bases that are represented as well. Um, you know, from all across the country, there'll be there'll be fans there, so that's always cool to see. You're going to stand out at a Montana bar though, because you have a full, complete, good set of teeth. Unlike <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh I, hey, I went to a, I, went, I went to a Montana State bar a couple of years ago, and that was that was really really fun. They 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 they, they had a good time there, and the Montana fans are uh, just as passionate, if not more passionate. So they'll mm-hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll 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 be there in, in droves as well. Can't wait! All right, Herder, we hope to see you down there. We appreciate your time. Make sure you guys follow Sam Herder on Twitter and follow his sports as well. And uh, with that, we'll get right into maybe some predictions. There is no way these guys can predict football games better than me. I am the Mighty versus Sports Simulator. Gentlemen, here you go. This is the versus Sports Simulator prediction. Number two, Montana going against South Dakota State, a 17 and a half point spread. Most people have it at 12 and a half, Vegas and others. 17 and a half points with a prediction of an over under of 43 and a half points. Now we are not going to predict this. So this really isn't even a segment, but we wanted to give our shout out to versus sports simulator. Make sure you download that app. Use promo code FCS fans nation, uh, South Dakota state overwhelming favorites. This is a time for us to promote things and talk about our show. We are going to be going live again down in Frisco. The Rev, Taco King, Chris Ham, and Jamie Williams, Kyler, myself. We will be doing a college game day style morning episode, either Saturday or Sunday morning, down there in Frisco, Texas, live from either our Airbnb or another bar location. We haven't quite decided yet. So make sure you're subscribed to YouTube. If you're listening to this podcast right now on Apple or Spotify, just make sure that you click subscribe on YouTube because that's going to be the live stream. For the FCS Fans Nation College Game Day episode, it's a traditional episode that we do. It's a ton of fun. It really is an enjoyable time. So if you want to catch our predictions, that's going to be the place to do it. Beyond that, we have reached the end of the episode, but we are going to talk a little bit about Frisco specifics here. Uh, We will be down there, the entire crew for basically Uh, the Fans Nation Network. So you're talking Jackrabbit Illustrated individuals. You are talking about individuals from... A fight on Montana. You're talking about our beautiful network, of course, the Rev, and we've got everybody else. So it will be another fun time down in Frisco. Make sure you follow us on FCS Fans Nation on Facebook and Twitter because we will be blasting out where we will be. We're also going to be releasing a photo Monday, Tuesday, which is going to show kind of our game plan of where we're going to be going, swinging some top golf. We're going to go to Montana bars. We're going to go to South Dakota State bars. We're going to be at the tailgates. Rainbow Row will be there right behind the field goal post at the game itself. So, guys, this is going to be just an incredible experience. We're excited to see everybody there again. And just know that uh, we want to see and meet as many of of you as possible. I mean, YouTube is over 2,000 subscribers. The Facebook page is 22,000. You're talking 7,000 on Twitter. I mean, our views on this podcast between Apple, Spotify, and YouTube have been upwards to 5,000 per week in the last month. I mean, there's so many of you guys that support and love this show. And the best part of us for Frisco is literally talking to you guys. It's seeing each other, talking to you guys. So um, it just keep track of us, and we really want to see you when you're down there. So we've got the Frisco 22 title game kind of recap playing on the screen right now. Uh, but I want to give Kyler and, and Rev each one last second here to speak. Uh, excited for Frisco, ready to go this coming weekend, Mr. Neal. That's 17.44 is wild, Matt. I just sent you a, a message. This was from Kevin at... Uh, FCS, you know, nation. Yeah. And he asked, what do you think the spread will be? This was like right when the game was announced. And I said, minus 17.5 and versus 17.44. So um, that's pretty incredible. But the only thing I want to say outside of, I enjoyed being the heel this year. Um, <laughs> I think if you guys listen to the very first episode, I said, I'm going to make some just crazy takes. And I enjoyed being the heel and I'm going to continue being it because it's fun. Um, and also because screw you both teams. You know, you both suck. You were afraid to play Eastern this year. So yeah, it is what it is. You probably would have went 0 and 2, you bums. Um, I said what I said. None of you have to believe me. Even I don't have to believe me, but I said what I said. But Matt, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Everyone, including the Rev, Rev did like 58 songs. 
So there's always that karaoke night because South Dakota <laughs> State fans, apparently they've never done anything outside of singing a bar because that's all their bars include. Yep. What song? Because we're going to force all of us to do that. Mm-hmm. And you and I, we just drank, sat on the sidelines. We were kind of pansies. We were making fun of everyone. And Rev killed it. I mean, he was definitely tone deaf. But he killed it. I rapped. Uh, okay. He should have rapped. rapped one time. He sang 50 times. He I had his, that's awesome. Come on. Um, Come on. You know, Brendan sounded like Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw, like meth. But um, actually, actually, Brendan sounded pretty phenomenal. I was kind of jealous. He was good. He's, he's eight foot tall. He's nice. He's got a good beard and he can sing. Screw that guy. I hate him. What a bitch. But Matt, what are you gonna <laughs> what are you gonna sing? Because all of us, we have to do it this year. Oh, we have to do it. Um, so I want to know what are you gonna sing outside of maybe like some Ramstein, some <laughs> ooh. Yeah. What are you gonna um, sing, metalhead? If you had to, if you had to force me for me to pick to actually make myself sound good, I have a million Eminem songs memorized, which are funny. But um, <laughs> oh, yes, I sang, I sang the bar, I sang baritone level well, sound. Yeah, you got a phenomenal voice. Thanks. In high school, I'm not great, but I would do standard Johnny Cash. I can hit those baritone notes pretty good. You were Some a choir kid, Johnny. Oh yeah, pop choir. I did it all. Yep. Oh God, Matt's gonna surprise everyone. Yeah, no, wow. he's, gonna, he's the ringer. S- no. Yeah, yeah, this guy's gonna sound like Sam Smith. Yeah, but baritone. <laughs> Not at all. It's I, from my understanding, we're gonna be assigning songs to people, so that's gonna be make oh, it a little it. bit more okay. interesting. So, do I get to pick your song? Can you it get at to least pick... be like us? Uh, like we give three choices because there's gonna be some I don't, yeah. I've never heard of. Well, the options are going to be good for everybody, guys. And Rev, thank you so much for joining us here. Um, Folks, if you're listening to us on the airplane, in your car, wherever you are, thank you so much for listening to the FCS Fans Nation podcast. Remember to follow us. And we are so pumped to see all of you guys down there for Frisco, Texas. It's going to be a heck of a game between the Grizz and the Jackrabbits. And we will catch you for the live show down in the greatest place for a national championship game. See you in Frisco. Catch you on the next one. Boom. Thank you for listening to the FCS Fans Nation podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe to this podcast on your preferred listening platform, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google, or even YouTube. And make sure to follow our FCS Fans Nation social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for listening to the premier podcast for FCS football. Boom. The FCS Fans Nation podcast is brought to you by Walk On Apparel. Walk On Apparel specializes in FCS and mid-major clothing and believes that every fan base should have quality options to rep the schools they love. Along with you receiving a great product, 10% of the profit from every sale is donated directly to that school's athletic fund. Visit walkon-apparel.com and use promo code FCSFANSNATION to get 15% off of your purchase. Limited schools currently available with new releases monthly. Walk on apparel. Up the fans, up the culture. The FCS Fans Nation podcast is also sponsored by the ultimate analytical prediction football experience. Introducing the Versus Sports Simulator, your secret weapon for predicting FCS, mid-major, and all other football games. Get ahead of the game and take your sports betting and knowledge to the next level with a site and app that's built to ignore bias and just give you the facts. If you subscribe today and use promo code FCSFANSNATION, you'll save 20% on your subscription. You can download the Versus app on the App Store and Google Play by searching Versus Sports Simulator or going to VersusSportsSimulator.com. With Versus, it's not a prediction. It's science. You guys are what's standing between me and some uh, freshly shucked oysters.